Hey, welcome back everyone. Um, a bit of a shorter video this time. We're only going to be doing a suborbital flight, but it's an important one because it was the first American manned mission in space. Um, this one's going to be uh, resembling the Mercury Redstone rocket, um, but we got to build it completely from scratch because I've not done anything yet that looks even remotely like it. So. so yeah, welcome back if you're a subscriber, or if this is your first time watching one of my videos, don't forget that you can subscribe to get them uh, in your feed as soon as they're submitted by me. I'm going to be doing two a week now, so um, you should be okay. Oh, two a week or more, two a week minimum, anyway. But yeah, here we go. The upper stage here it's just a, a light RCS um, based system to deorbit. Basically, I'm hoping to get all of it into orbit and then just use that to push us back into the atmosphere. Um, yeah, and I'm looking for a launch escape tower because that was one of the prominent aspects of the Mercury rockets was that they had like a red painted tower on top. And I'm using a little hack that you can do if you press um, Alt and F12. You can clip objects in Kerbal Space Program inside uh, onto the green dots of another piece um, so there's no clipping. Which I, I don't see it as cheating because in real life there was um, the parachutes were able to store things on top of them, so and that's my little rudimentary escape tower. Um, yeah, but I don't see it as cheating because um, there there are mods that have like the real parachutes mod that I used to use that that emulate the same thing, but I didn't see a point of having a whole set of new parachute behavior just to have a parachute um, that you could put on top of the stack. But yeah, and now I'm finding a way to try and cope with having these retros, uh, these um, RCS rockets there. So I have to put on clipping again so I can continue the stack downwards. So I've, I've used the F12 hack twice now, but... So there we go, little fins on the bottom like the actual rocket um, escape tower on top. And then that should decouple without problems. Just checking the staging. And of course the escape tower is useless unless I set up the abort action group for it, which is going to fire them rockets and decouple all but the um, the capsule. And yeah, let, let's pick Bill Kerman because um, Jebediah has already been into space, so let's spread the fun about a bit. And I'm just saving that rocket as the, uh, the Juna Curbstone, the Curbstone rocket. And here's the Mercury Redstone. Um, that's why mine's called the Juna Curbstone. Um, it's a very, very simple rocket. It had a few launches before this, um, taking Ham the Chimp into space. And there was about 20 unmanned Mercury Project missions that were using a variety of rockets, including this one, that were flying boilerplate versions of the Mercury capsule. That is to say that they were the same weight, uh, height, aerodynamic composition they had. Um, some experiments to keep tracking of them, if they wanted to test whether those experiments would work under speed, those systems would work under speed. And also, they had the same center of mass, there was like uh, metallic blocks placed in place inside to emulate, as it would be under flight conditions. This one's a photo of, actually, the the right mission, this is Mercury Redstone 3, so this is the, um, the Alan Shepard mission. But before that, there was... Um, Mercury Redstone 2, which, like I say, was Ham the Chimp, and it was exactly the same launch profile. They just thought they would put a chimp through it first. So here we are on the launch pad. This one's just going to be a test of the escape system, because I built it. I thought well, we might as well check it out, see how it works. And you just push the abort button, and it works perfectly. Um, if you go back and check the VAB building, I reduced the amount of fuel or the thrust, one of the two, in the side of just one of them so that it would tip over and take us away from the rocket below it if we were using it in a real life situation. And yeah, the, the tower decouples fine, there's no clipping problems even though I used the Alt F12. On a Mac it's, I think it's Command F12, I'm not sure. Um, you'll have to google it because I don't use a Mac myself. Yeah, that works, let's just revert it. Uh, yeah, so Jebediah wasn't actually on that mission. It's going to be, I think, Bill, Bill or Bob. Um, I think uh, we'll go with 
Bill Kerman. Okay, let's launch it. And this is going to be the actual mission this time. Okay, so throttle up. It's all liquid fuel. So we've got complete control over this. It's going to be up into the atmosphere and straight back down again. That's how it's going to be. And we have a liftoff. Not having to use the escape tower so far. And yeah, the reason I'm quite keen about including this, even though it's not the first person into space, is that the Americans only missed out by about three weeks. Um, and technologically, they had a lot more missions in making the equipment safe than the Russians did. The Russians only had um, a, few, a few practice launches, but their systems worked fine. The American systems didn't. They exploded a lot, um, so they did a lot more launches based on escape tower technology and rocket technology and separation technology and all of that ended up pushing the, the flight back for, for Alan Shepard's first mission. The actual mission for Alan Shepard only took about 20 minutes um, straight up and straight down. It took him about 200 miles just off the Bahamas. Um, and the retro rockets fired even though he didn't have to use them to decrease his orbit. Um, but he was testing them for the next mission, which should be the orbital mission. And I have staged that wrong, haven't I? Yes, I have. Okay, well, let's just disconnect that. Ah, well. Okay, let's pitch over. I'm just trying to take it just, just into space. Okay, and this is about ready to disconnect. It's running out of fuel. Oh yeah, we're, we're clear into space, that's not a problem. So if we decouple now, we now have the stage, the orbital stage of this, which will be used to slow, slow down our craft and bring it back down from orbit. And he's not up there for long, is he? So he might as well have a look at what's out of his porthole window. See the blue glow of the atmosphere. It's, it's a it's a much more Spartan tight cockpit than the one that I sent up Jebediah Kerman in last episode. But yeah, all of the information is right there in front of him. And uh, Alan Shepard uh, was ready, like Yuri Gagarin was, to take control at any point, even though a lot of it was pre-programmed. There was a lot less that could go wrong with Alan Shepard's launch. So there were a lot fewer stages. Um, but he did have some control over or the Americans in general, would have some control over the directions that their craft was pointing in. And you can see as they're going up just about to 90,000 as the dial keeps spinning up. And as you can see, the vertical speed is very high. We'll keep going up even though we've lost the rocket. And I think we've reached our peak speed. Yes, yeah, so you can see our speed is coming down, which meant we've just thing is we haven't gone over the crest, we're still um, increasing vertically, we're just slowing down as we get to the highest point of the orbit. Yeah, we're, we're, we're uh, over 100,000 now, we're going up to 110. And yeah, I'm going to slow myself down using the uh, RCS retros. I mean, because it, it, it's great that I've managed to get into orbit so so easily, well, not into orbit, into space so easily on a weak rocket, but it's not that brilliant if I have to come in such a steep uh, inclination when I'm coming in, because then the um, the realistic re-entry mod will end up burning him up inside his, inside his uh, capsule there, so he'll boil him alive. But I'm not quite sure what boiled Kerbal tastes like, but I don't want to try it. Wow, there's a, yeah, having to do a lot of burn off just to bring the acceleration down. You can see the little wheel at the top, that's the vertical speed, that's how much I'm flying upwards. When that goes below zero, I'll start decreasing, uh, decreasing my altitude. But there we go, it's just tipping over now. Good god, that's, that's 
quite high, 120,000, give or take. But I'm definitely decreasing now, I'm not going to be stuck in orbit. You can see the clouds below. And yeah, the, the little wheel is spinning backwards now. So we're 10 minutes into this flight, or 10 minutes into the video. And yeah, a nice short suborbital hop as he's coming back. The The next mission will be the next American manned mission, which was on a different rocket. It was on an Atlas rocket, but um, still using the same Mercury capsule. So I'll be rebuilding the rocket for that, but using the same upper stage. If there's anything that you would like to see specifically that you think I might miss out because it's not the first of its kind, um, leave a comment highlighting any missions that you think you'll enjoy to watch and I'll make sure that I try and include them. Also, I'm thinking about doing more games to expand what I'm doing on YouTube. If you can think of any strategy games or clever games, I mean, I'm quite into intelligent gaming, which is why I'm really taken to Kerbal Space Program. But I'm also into stuff like Europa Universalis, um, Space Engineers I've taken quite a liking to recently. Anything like that, or anything silly or retro, just leave a comment and I'll and I'll start a series on it. But yeah, re-entry effects are, are going, and you can't really see them out of the window, so I don't think he'd be that terrified. Maybe he'd just be getting warm inside there. Got a little bit of an uneasy, uneasy spin but he's coming down really without problems and I just have the parachute to stage now that's the only thing that can go wrong but it's it's pretty clear that he's going to be fine although he's going for a, a sea landing which uh, has had problems in the American uh, Mercury program the, the doors have opened and not been sealed correctly and water's leaked in um, during the uh, retrieval attempts and the astronauts have nearly drowned but I think this one will go okay Kerbals are a lot more efficient at this. And there we go, we've reached our splashdown point. So thanks for watching everyone, if you're not a subscriber already don't forget to subscribe to see my newest videos, and I'll catch you all next time.